Good evening. Good evening. We're in a, another whole different location again this evening. I never know where I'm going to be when it comes to Thursday. So uh, give me a shout out. Let me know you're there. Make sure that you've got uh, video and that you can hear me, audio. Uh, still working through technology, but uh, it's good to see all of you this evening. Hello, hello, hello. Again, we're in a different location, different place. And so uh, using more new technology, I'm learning something new every time. So um, just uh, as you're as you're checking in, let me know you're here. Give me a wave or a shout out or a good evening. Uh, let me know that you can hear and that you have uh, you have video as well. That would help me out. Uh, last week we had a little bit of a glitch, but we got through it. We're working <laughs> we're working pretty hard at uh, learning how to move as we go and adapt uh, at getting our video and audios up and running. And so uh, I thank you all for uh, for being here this evening. Just let me know what, what your video is looking like, uh, what your audio is looking like, um, and, uh, and check in. Some of you are seeing me sideways, so let me, uh, let me refresh the screen and, and see what that looks like and uh, see if we can't help you out somehow. Let me know if this comes in better for you. Refresh the screen. Does that work better for you? <laughs> it's always something new around here, isn't it? How's that? There we go. Hopefully that's working better for some of you. There we go. Good. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> I'm always I'm always trying to figure out how to refresh, you know? When they say anything doesn't work, just turn it off and start over. <laughs> and so that's what we've been doing. It's good to see you all. Linda, thank you so much. <laughs> Come on, Tina. You know I'm usually sideways anyhow, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Vic, how are you? Miss seeing you on Sundays. I hope you are still practicing, keeping those vocal cords good for us. You know, you don't get uh, 10 weeks off. You better be uh, taking care of those cords for us. Um, I'm, I'm sure we'll be hearing you again real soon. So, uh, Hey, Mary Ann, it's good to see you. I hope you guys are all doing well. It's a warm evening. Uh, we're looking forward to the summertime. And, uh, you know, this is usually the time of year when I, I uh, used to live at the shore. So this was the time of year we'd get all ramped up with people coming to visit. And so uh, <clears throat> uh, we're looking forward to that as well. Larry, good to see you. Uh, say hi to everyone down there in EHT. We miss you guys. Uh, got some, uh, some special surprises coming for the uh, 8 o'clock service at First Church. Um, while the building is empty right now, we're working on some, some things, and so we have some good surprises coming your way. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully we'll be announcing it real soon. Uh, even though uh, you guys aren't in the building with us during the week, uh, there's still a lot going on, a lot happening. Um, and so I wanted you guys to just, just know that your church is still very, very 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 busy so hi jenny it's so good to see you guys say hey to fred uh hey do me a favor jenny and ask fred about the shorts <laughs> we had an interesting story uh today about shorts so uh <laughs> you have to ask him what that was all about um but uh hey if i don't if i don't see you again jenny you guys have a great vacation i know you guys are getting ready to take some break so we really appreciate all the work that you and fred are doing for the church and so thank you very much. So well-deserved. So make sure you hang out and just uh, get the rest that you need. Hi, Janet. Hi, Kim. It's good to see everybody. I ran into Janet at the grocery store this week at the food market. I was behind my hat and sunglasses and mask, and she even recognized me. So I, I figure in the future I can now go out without having to get all, all dressed up, and uh, no one will even know it's me. So, <laughs> uh, But Janet, thank you so much for that mask. I've been wearing it every day, everywhere. So, so thank you for keeping me keeping me safe and keeping others safe as well. That's why we wear them. And that's what's so, so very important. So um, again, it's good to see all of you. If you're just joining with us, make sure you've got uh, audio and visu visual to make sure you can see me and hear me um, and uh, check in, let us know, say hi, and uh, give us a wave or a shout or some emoji you've come up with. That would be great. 
uh, and let us know that you're with us. It's always good to know who we are gathered with, who we are praying with, our brothers and sisters together. As we come together tonight, uh, I think this week you all know that prayer is just so powerful and it is something that we as Christians lean upon and we should. God tells us to lean upon his word, to lean upon him, and prayer is conversation with God. And it's, it's just so, so critically important, especially this week. I mean, not especially this week. I say that, you know, our, our lives are, are so that we should always be in prayer. But there's a lot troubling our hearts. Um, and, and it's been a difficult week. We, we have families at church who have lost loved ones, um, totally unrelated to COVID. And, and we have people who are, who are still trying to uh, recover from COVID. We have people who are working on the front lines, who are dealing with the scare of that every day. Um, we have families that are trying to trying to survive uh, this crazy time. And, and of course, you all know our nation is in complete unrest right now. A lot of hurt feelings, a lot of turmoil, a lot of frustration, a lot of, of pent up anger. Um, and then there's some who are taking advantage of all of it and, and doing the awful things that they're doing. So uh, I'm glad that we're all joining together uh, in prayer and that we're all coming together. You know, when we come together in prayer, uh, especially when it's a group of us, uh, it's not it's not just for one of us to God. It's all of us. And as we lean on God and we pray to God, he reminds us to look around and to see all of you here um, this evening uh, who are reaching out and joining together in prayer. And and he's, he's saying to us, hey, you've got each other. You are not alone. I did not create you to be alone. You are there together to support one another, and and that's 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 so important. So important. So, uh, good evening, Mike. It's good to see you. Hope things are well with you and the family. Mary, I haven't seen you in quite a while. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, it's great to have you join in with us this way. It's a good way to be connected uh, together with you. Thank you so much. It's so good to see all of you. Uh, it's truly, I got to tell you, this is one of the best things that I do during the week to come together. And uh, it really warms my heart to gather in prayer with all of you. And remember, I mean, I, I'm just like just another human being like you. Uh, when I lift up and pray to God, it, it certainly is comforting and warming to me to know that I have brothers and sisters that I can uh, reach out to, even though maybe virtually and uh, and connect with and, and to reach out to God. Um, as we get started this evening, I just wanted to give you a couple of, of quick updates. Um, don't forget this Sunday is Communion Sunday, so it'll be Communion at Home. So before you join us, and the worship starts at 9 a.m., Facebook Live or on our YouTube channel, uh, make sure as you're gathering your, your family and your friends around the TV or the monitors and screens <clears throat> that you also get a plate with a, with a piece of bread or a pastry on it and a cup of water or juice. And join with us, and we'll be going, uh, we'll be uh, joining together in communion, though not physically together, we'll be virtually together. And so, we want to invite you to do that. Following this Sunday, uh, we'll be beginning a new worship series, and we'll be walking through the book of Amos. Um, it's not a very popular book in the sense that not a lot of people have read it. Amos is one of our prophets from the Old Testament, it's a short uh, book. Uh, it's actually not a book. It's more like a library. Um, it contains a couple of chapters of Amos's sermons, which are messages that God gave him to give to the nation. And then there's a series of what we call poetry, but probably what they would call back then uh, prophecy, uh, <clears throat> talking about what the nation has done and what God is now going to do. Uh, this is what a prophet is doing. This Amos is the prophet who is telling them, look, this is what you've done, and this is how God's going to respond. And then at the end, there's another um, chapter, chapter and a half, where Amos then tells them uh, the future. And so I think it's a very, very appropriate book. Uh, we did not plan it this way. Uh, we didn't know what culture was going to bring. But when we were looking at going through a book or two of the Bible during the spring, Amos has been something that's been on my heart for uh, two or three years now to walk through. And the theme of Amos is justice. Martin Luther King, in his famous speech, quoted Amos. And he quoted, you know, let justice roll and righteousness flow like a river. 
And so I think that's extremely appropriate now for us, but always appropriate for us no matter what we're going through is to remind ourselves what justice and righteousness truly mean and what that calls us as Christians to do. What is our next steps or what is the action that God is expecting from us? So we'll be beginning that next week. So again, invited uh, this Sunday morning at nine o'clock for uh, communion, communion at home. And then following that, we'll be starting the book of Amos. And so we're excited about that. Tracy, goes so good to have you join us this evening. Um, <clears throat> also, I want to remind you, any prayer requests, go ahead and send them out to the church. Uh, prayer list at firstumcmillville.org. If you would do that, uh, we can get your prayers to our prayer group, who our prayer hour team is meeting. They're, they're meeting virtually, but they are meeting, uh, getting on their knees and praying for you and in, in this world and the situations that, that you have. We are lifting those up. As well as you know, our care and nurture team is also working, uh, praying for those as well. We have a we have an awesome group of prayer warriors, and so they're working throughout the week as well. So if you have any prayers, make sure you get them out to them, um, and we want to be with you. And again, like I say every Sunday, we love you guys, and if there's anything that we can do, if you have any needs, uh, please do not be ashamed, embarrassed, or anything like that. This is what family is for, this is what the church is for, and we want to help you. Speaking of which, I want to thank all of you who have been um, donating to our food pantry, food cupboard, food closet, however you'd like to name it. Uh, we've been serving quite a few families throughout the week um, with great, great food supplies. And um, it, is, it is sad to see that people are in need. However, it is very heartwarming to see all of you uh, bring your extras to the church. Um, we have a team that's ready there to accept them, sanitize them, sort them and then deliver them out to people who have needs. So thank you so, so much for that. Um, this evening, I was thinking about um, how we say amen. And we say it almost um, so frequently, it's, it's almost like a cough. Or instead of saying um, uh, we say amen. And, I, and I, I wanted to just give you a little background about that word because it means a lot more than the end. Uh, it means a lot more than <clears throat> it, it, it's not a it's not a pause. It's not an um. It's something that 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 cries out. See, amen began as a word that was used in the Hebrew Bible, and it meant to be faithful. It meant to be faithful, to be reliable, to be established, to be uh, to be truthful, and. Um, amen was something that the prophets in the in the Old Testament used. Uh, I think it was Jeremiah who used it to even ridicule a, fa a false prophet. He said, oh yeah, right, you're amen, like as if to question that you're a false prophet. You are not reliable. You are not truthful. And then it was the prophet Isaiah who said that we should follow the God of amen. God of amen. Amen, which means the God of reliability, the God of truth, the God who is faithful, uh, the God who we should always and all the time believe in. That's amen. So saying amen is, is a powerful, powerful statement. It should never be considered to be a, an afterthought or, a, or a, 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 in exchange for like the end, and that's all kind of folks. That's throughout the, the Old Testament. Then when Jesus comes along, Jesus comes and he uses the word amen, but he, he twists it. See, when, when God came in human form in a man named Jesus Christ, he then could no longer say, well, something else is truthful and reliable. What Jesus would say was, amen, I am the truth. I am the light. I am the way. And so the word amen became almost part of a phrase that would be amen lego human, which means truly, reliably established, I say to you. I, God, say to you. Amen is us affirming that you and I deeply believe that God's word is true. That's pretty heavy. When we talk about what it has 
been taught to us and said to us and made us feel and corrected us and guided us. Scripture is powerful. And then we all say, Amen. Meaning, I believe that you are the truth. So when Jesus tells us, love your neighbor as you love yourself, and we say, amen, we can't back down on that. We can't just assume that Jesus said that and that's meant for someone else, or, or I'll try my hardest. We've said that is the absolute truth. And knowing the truth should transform us and change us and drive us to not divide. I heard someone say today, I just want to be treated like everyone else is treated. And I thought, that's, that's not how it works. We're to treat other people the way we want to be treated. And that means that I'm going to work extra hard at treating other people first, knowing how I want to be treated. Because that's the truth in what Jesus has told me as to how I'm supposed to respond to my neighbor. Not that because you've got a fish, I want a fish. Or because you've got something, I want something. Or because you were treated a certain way, I want to be treated a certain way. Jesus never said that. And then we all said, Amen. Amen. I have a friend of mine who uh, would tell me that they didn't like it when pastors would say, and all God's people said, and then wait. My friend would say, that's too forced. That's too forced. And I guess in a way it is because it's a declaration. So if you say it, you better mean it. Because you're saying God is the truth and it's what we believe. And there's no arguing about it. There's a Christian artist by the name of Matt Mayer, and he has a song that's called All the People Said Amen. It's a, it's a nice, upbeat song, All the People Said Amen. But I'm going to read through those lyrics for us as we go through a prayer tonight. And tonight we're going to pray for those in, involved with the coronavirus, and we're going to pray for those who are, who are working hard and suffering from that. And we're also going to pray for our world tonight that is just being torn apart by division, and being torn apart by looking in the mirror and then looking at others and just searching for differences instead of seeking the commonalities between ourselves. You know, we're all created by God. We all have one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All of us. All of us walking on two feet. It's amazing to me. And yet, if you want to look really hard, we're all different. Every single one of us is different. Some say even identical twins have something that's different. We're all different. So why don't we stop trying to pick at what is different? And why don't we start choosing at what's common? What fills us with joy? To see that God is so creative that he could create, you know, something like me and then something like you. So I want to begin by just reading some of these lyrics to you, so if you could just listen to these lyrics. I, I love the way he, he writes these out. And again, this is Matt Mayer, and the song's called All the People Said Amen. You are not alone if you are lonely. When you're feeling, <clears throat> sorry, when you're feeling frail, you're not the only. We are all the same, in need of mercy to be forgiven and be free. It's all you've got to lean on, but thank God, it's all you need. If you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. Weak or strong, we know love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall, and he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. Let all the people say, Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, grab your, your family right there. Grab a hand. Come together. Let's clear our minds. Let's open our hearts. And let's go to the Lord in the word of prayer. Let's pray. God of healing hands. Hands that, that join together your sons and your daughters in one family. 
the Lord Jesus, who reaches across ethnic boundaries of, of Samaritans and Romans and Jews, the one who offered sight to the blind and freedom to captives. Lord, help us to break down the barriers that exist in our community. Enable us to see the reality of racism and bigotry. Help us to see the damage that it has done and that it is doing. And Lord, free us. Free us to challenge ourselves. And then to uproot ourselves from wherever we've been to go into a new place. Lord, help us to change the structures of our society, beginning with ourselves first. And then help us to go out to the world to change those as well. Lord, you know that just a few short weeks ago, we were crying out, we're in this together. And that was when the enemy was unseen and unknown. The coronavirus, Lord, is a plague sweeping across the earth like wind and mist. It has no racism. It has no ageism. It has no sexism. It is our common enemy. It is the common oppressor, Lord. It is the common murderer. But quickly, Lord, forgive us as the human race, we found a way to divide ourselves, to turn against unity and, and to lift up a way to attack our very own. God of all creation, you called every single thing into life. You are the one who is mindful of humankind and in all of our diversity. And you created us with great dignity. You granted each and every one of us different gifts and talents so that we could all be a part of the whole body, that we could be part of the world as it comes together and as this great earth spins. Lord, we ask for your spirit to unite us. Where we face a lack of understanding and disunity, guide us. Help us in our churches. Help us in our communities. And yes, in our nation. Lord, we lay before you the burdens that are on our hearts today. Many of us are crying out. Many of us feel the need to stand up and walk. Many of us feel the need to speak out. And Lord, some are silent, crying, quietly crying inside. Father of all, we ask that your spirit would unite us in the face of this conflict, in the face of this hatred and the violation of life. Lord, we've, we've experienced these things in, in so many different regions around this globe. And so now, Lord, we quiet ourselves. We quiet ourselves and we open our hearts. And in our silence, we bring to you the pain of those who have been victims from this division. We lift up the victims their families, and their friends. Lord, we lift up the young eyes who have seen horrible photos and videos that we as adults don't know well enough to turn off and to shut down. Lord, forgive us. Father, we ask for your spirit to unite us whenever fear prevents us from reaching out and from being a neighbor, from meeting people of different backgrounds and cultures and ethnicities and faith communities and, and to meet them and to reach out to them and, and treat them all with the respect that we all deserve for each and every one is a son and daughter of yours. Lord, all of these things weigh on our hearts and we bring to you the brokenness that is in our human relationships here on earth. Father, again, we ask for your forgiveness 
and ask for your love to just blanket over us. And God, you are the creator of all. And through your son, Jesus Christ, we have been reconciled. And so now we ask for your spirit once again to unite us and overcome us. Bind all of our divisions and bring us together as quickly as possible so this violence that's currently happening in our world may come to an end, that it may cease, and that future generations won't have any idea what it's like. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart. Blessed are the people longing for another start. For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And all of God's people said, Amen and Amen and Amen. Lord, you are the Father of us all. Even if we know you by a, a different name, we all know you as God, ruler of the world and creator of the universe. Lord, this evening we ask you to hear the prayers of your sons and daughters, brothers and sisters who have gathered together, who are here now in this space. Hide us in the shadow of your wings. Make us part of your safety secret. Let us not grow weary, Lord, in loving one another. And in the days to come, help us to continue taking all the precautions we need to take, protecting one another, all of us united against this disease. Lord, you have control of even this day. You've had control of every day this week, no matter how evil and, and how hard it has been. But with those desperate souls who are, who are trying to figure this all out, Lord, be with them. Especially on those who, who can't see a way out. Lord, we lift up to you those who are trying to come up with a cure. A cure not only for the virus, but a cure for the divisions that are happening. Father, I'd ask that you'd give comfort to those who are panicking. Make their hearts beat just a little bit slower. And let us not to forget to pray, not only for ourselves, but for all the people this day. Lord, we lift up to you those who are working on our behalf, those who are on the front lines, all of our civil servants, Lord, all those who are putting themselves in harm way. We, we know how much they they love you, and that's why they're answering the call to do what they are doing. Continue to guide us and direct us. Lord, I would pray that you'd especially be on our tongues. Your word tells us that the tongue can be as sharp as a sword, and though it's the smallest part, can do the most damage. Help us to not say something before we think. Help us to not type something before we think. And help us to see everyone as very, very different, but different because you are a creator with a multitude of imagination. And we can see the joy and the love and the beautiful craftsmanship that you created us to see. And Lord, as we close today, we need to remember those who are suffering, those who have lost loved ones, Fill the hole that's in their heart, and it's a hole that only you can fill. Guide them and direct them. Lord, we thank you for opening the gates to those who have left us and pulling out the seat at the table there in heaven. Lord, we, we'd ask for your blessings upon all of us this evening. We ask in the most humble way we can, not because... We deserve it, but because you created us, you love us, and you have called us your family. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, it's been my honor to be with you. Thank you for inviting me into your spaces, into your homes. 
I thank you for joining me to come and pray for our world tonight. It surely does warm my heart to know that my brothers and sisters have gathered around. Again, uh, we at First Church love you. We miss you. We can't wait to have you back physically, but it certainly does does warm us again to see you on Sunday morning. So uh, make sure you get your bread and water or juice for this Sunday for communion at home. Uh, again, if you have any needs, please reach out to us. And if you're if you're in a position that you think you can get out a little bit and you'd like to serve, let us know that as well. We have lots of people who, uh, who are in need of touch, a call, an email, a card written, those kinds of things. We, we really do want to connect with, with everyone and keep you, uh, and keep you together. Um, also, continue to pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. Pray for those who, who can't see any other way out but, but to do the horrible things they're doing. Pray for them, that God would touch them, and that they'd be open to the Spirit moving inside of them. And so that they could just take a good look and to stop these acts and to continue to work as we all should be working towards unity and not division. I thank you all. Have a beautiful evening and we'll see you real soon. God bless.